The following is an editorial opinion and does not necessarily reflect the views of Jewish TV channel and its staff. Welcome to a Jewish TV channel exclusive. What Others Won't Say with Thane Rosenbaum. And the Oscar for Jewish self-hatred goes to... More about that later. Long before anyone had ever seen Holocaust movies like Schindler's List, The Pianist, and Sophie's Choice, an iconic American funny man, director, writer, and psych gag specialist, Jerry Lewis, back in 1972, directed the film The Day the Clown Cried. Don't remember seeing it? Well, that's because it was never released, and to this day, the whereabouts of the original print remains a mystery. The film was instantly deemed unwatchable. It was about a washed up circus clown interned at Auschwitz who leads the children to the gas chambers. 1972 was a mere 27 years after the liberation of Auschwitz. Everything about the film violated the moral and aesthetic principles of art. It dared to reimagine the death camps, factories of mass murder, where the systematic extermination and then cremation of two out of every three Jews of Europe was largely achieved. A clown misleading the children to their deaths? Even Lewis never wanted anyone to see the movie. He was mortified by it. The producers blamed him, but they too understood that audiences were not ready for such a grotesque cinematic spectacle. Less than a week ago, a Holocaust film received an Oscar for Best Foreign Language Movie. It depicted the life directly outside of Auschwitz, the blithely desensitized, normalized life of the camp's commandant. How did this high-ranking Nazi and his family manage to live so closely to the barbaric, so obtuse to the atrocious, so casually unaffected by what was taking place on the other side of their garden? The idea for the film is not really all that original. Sophie's Choice covered the same blood-soaked ground and ashen skies. But what was unexpected on Oscar night was the acceptance speech of the film's director. Having made a film that explored the extreme consequences of moral failure, he created his own, informing a global audience, quote, we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked for an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people, close quote. Yeah, he was referring to Israel and its war in Gaza. He was comparing Israel's war of self-defense to the Nazis' genocide of Jews and Hamas's citizen army of human shields to six million Jewish victims. He wanted the world to know that he wasn't at all like the Jews in Israel who kill Palestinians. He was morally superior to them and wanted the Hollywood elite to know that he can and should be invited to glamorous parties because he had just renounced his Jewishness. The Jews of Europe didn't launch rockets at Germany for 20 years. Jews never beheaded German babies or burned them alive. They didn't gang rape and mutilate German teenage girls. They weren't terrorists. They were truly innocent civilians. Ironically, this film director made a movie about monsters and then somehow misidentified what modern monsters look like. It was his people who had hijacked the Holocaust for their own murderous ends. Really? He could have stood there and told the audience, it's happening again, and we promised never again to my people. Return the hostages. Instead, the director exposed himself as a clown. Thane Rosenbaum for the Jewish TV channel.